Once fired, your fingerprint necklace will look dull and white and matte, and it'll have a rough and frosted surface. It definitely won't look like the lovely fingerprint necklace that you imagined just yet. To make it look like a real piece of silver jewellery, you now have to sand it back again, like you did in the dry clay stage, to polish the metal. Now, when I say polishing, I don't mean giving a little bit of a rub with a duster. I spend a huge amount of my life polishing gold and silver, and I swear that's what people think I do all day long. For this kind of polishing, you're going to use the same grades of sanding pads and sandpaper that you used before. We're going to use the different grades again, going from abrasive to ultra fine, aiming to achieve a completely smooth and polished shiny surface. This process will now complete your fingerprint necklace, making it all shiny and silvery and ready to wear. The last thing that will be left to do is to attach the little silver jump ring so that we can hang it from a chain. So, so the very first stage after filing is to use your most abrasive sanding pad. Now, some people will go over the entire surface of the fingerprint necklace, front, back and size, gently, emphasis, emphasis on gently, using a soft brass brush. Now, this is the kind of brass brush that you can buy for cleaning suede and shoes. You can brush over the whole fingerprint to stop it staying white and chalky looking, but you've got to bear in mind that you've got to take care and be gentle, gentle. You're not scrubbing a frying pan. The silver is definitely 100% more robust than the clay, but it's still not that robust. It's not indestructible and you can scratch it. I'm not a huge fan of brass brushes because I'll find that even though they don't destroy fingerprints, you can still in the right light see the fine scratches across it left by the brass brush. You can have the same effect using fine sandpaper. You just have to take your time. Now, Take your sandpaper or your sanding pad and cut a piece off, again, so that you don't lose track of what grade your piece of sanding pad is. When you cut a piece off, get a Sharpie marker or another marker and just write on the back whichever grade that piece of sanding pad is. Start with your most abrasive, so in this case it's the 180 sanding pad. If you're using wet and dry sandpaper, you might want to start with a slightly more abrasive braid than you did before. So instead of starting with 800 like we did in the dry clay stage, start with something like 400. Now you need to move it slowly over the entire surface of your fingerprint necklace, including the sides, but with the very, very abrasive sandpaper, avoid the fingerprint. Leave that alone for now. In fact, to make sure that you don't catch the fingerprint with your most abrasive sandpaper uh, and make sure you don't end up sanding it, pop your fingerprint over the top of it to cover it completely and carefully work your way around the edges of it. You're sanding right up against your fingernail. You need to make sure that you very carefully and evenly go over the whole of the necklace. Take your time, it's never worth rushing this or you will end up seeing scratches in your finished necklace. You need to repeat this process with all of the different grades of sanding pads and if you can get hold of them, the sanding papers because they will give you an even more beautiful mirror finish. Going down to the very, very finest. The more time you spend on your necklace at this stage, the prettier your final necklace will be. It's painstaking and it's gonna take you a long time, but it's totally, totally worth it. You will notice that your necklace will get progressively shinier as you go. Finally, you will have one beautiful fingerprint necklace made out of fine silver, no longer clay, just like magic.